so today I wanted to talk to you about the indigo inks and charcoal work that I've been doing on paper. Um, over the last uh, weeks and months I have been starting to do a new body of work and starting to explore the uh, landscapes that surround me which are moorlands and hills, valleys and woodland. Uh, and one of the ways I've been doing that is to create this body of work uh, using uh, the indigo inks and charcoal. And what I've been doing is trying to start to explore my interest in the landscape in terms of the shapes and the patterns and the lines and the marks. And so these particular materials have been wonderful as a way of me being able to start that exploration. So what I want to do now is to talk to you a little bit more about the materials um, and uh, why I've used that combination uh, and also to share with you some of the mark making tools uh, and the approaches I've been taking. So starting with the tools I've been using, uh, this is the, sorry, the, um, the materials I've been using. This is the indigo, uh, wonderful chunk here. Uh, very powdery, uh, grainy, uh, soluble. So that's really lovely. And you can see from the paper here how uh, you can create all sorts of marks with it. You can press in hard, you can be quite delicate, you can add the water and so on. I've also, as a contrast to that, but kind of works really well with the indigo, I've been using compressed charcoal, which when you push that into the paper is very velvety and rich and it darkens the uh, indigo even further. And then I have been using inks, which again have a contrast to the indigo and the charcoal. I've created this myself using other yellows and purples to ref reflect the heather and I've used other colours of acrylic inks as well and I've been uh, adding that in uh, to reflect uh, the landscapes I've been exploring. But the other thing that's so lovely is that it's very transparent and moves in the paper in a different way again so hopefully that you can see that. So in terms of the paper I've been using, um, I did talk, uh, show you at the beginning, um, behind me, you probably didn't see it and I forgot to mention it, those bigger pieces were actually done on cartridge paper. But I've been exploring using different sorts of watercolour paper and what I found is that I didn't really like the rough papers because I didn't like the way the indigo sat in the grooves of the paper. But I really liked the smoothness of the hot press uh, paper and that's what this is. Um, and it's a Fabriano, I hope you can see that better, how smooth it is. Um, it's a Fabriano 100% um, cotton rag paper, uh, very uh, beautiful and it enables the showing up of all the different variety of marks that you uh, might want to incorporate in without the texture of the paper. Um, actually interfering with that. So I tried gessoing the paper but again there was marks where the gesso w had gone you know in terms of the brush marks and that kind of interfered with these lovely different lines that you get. Now I mentioned to you about pushing the mark making and there's two ways um, that I've been doing that. One is by using a variety of tools which I'll mention to you in a minute. The other thing is to think about, and I should say, by the way, that the indigo came from Wallace Seymour via Jeanette Phillips, who does uh, a uh, half-day workshop. And what was interesting was with Jeanette is that she talks a lot about the different ways that you can use uh, the uh, indigo but I sort of wanted to push that further and I've come with these descriptive words that I've used that partly about the material but also um, partly uh, about the um, the actual landscapes that I'm exploring so that really helps because it helps you think about well what have I just made the mark and what how can I be more different to that? So, you know, there's the idea of dripping and having faint marks and bold marks and marks that are really exaggerating and ones that are quite tentative uh, and ones that are very rich, ones that are energetic, ones that are quite spidery, ones that are very scratchy. So I was quite interested in all these different words because you look in the landscape and you see those different sorts of the things that you could, you could describe the landscape in those ways as well. So anyway, so that's uh, part of what I've done. And I just want to finish by talking to you about the tid, by talking about the tools. So in terms of adding water, we've talked about um, adding water to get these really lovely effects where the indigo bleeds through and into the charcoal and so on. So I use brushes for that. I've used a flat headed brush. I've used, it's a bit 
worse for wear that one but that's a, a, a mop brush um, and then I've used that for my inks so you can use a variety of brushes to get the different marks in addition to that I have used things to create wonderful scratchy marks with so I have used uh, this uh, which is a palette knife and you can sort of scratch in and get all sorts of different effects by how you use it whether you use it on the flat and you create these wide marks or whether you use it in quite a pointy way you'll see me using that out in the landscape and then this is a bamboo and again you get these very nice spidery lines if I well, here you can see how you get these spidery lines with that and quite delicate lines but they could be quite straight and angular or they can be quite sort of spidery like that so that's one thing and then I've been using different landscape pieces that I've picked up on my way as well so this is one of them and this is a um, uh, actually it's part of the heather so uh, again you can use that to create some wonderful marks as well so variety is a spice of life, as they say, and certainly it's variety in tools and ways of pushing the media into the paper that gives you the variety. some of the uh, pieces that I've selected for mounting and uh, they're, they're being fixed as well because the indigo uh, and the charcoal need fixing and they're going to be available from next week and uh, they will be shared firstly with my newsletter subscribers and then subsequently um, on my open event the 3rd and 4th of October so thanks very much for watching bye bye